Welcome back everyone. Thanks for watching. In this video, we're going to work out geometric series. So let's go ahead and talk about what is a series first. Well, the word series is just another way of saying sum of the terms on a sequence. Now we're going to add up infinite series, so infinite sums. Here's a specific one that we're going to talk about, a geometric series. Geometric series usually has the form of a plus a times r plus a times r squared, plus a times r cubed, and you're adding up infinite number of terms. This can be written as the sum starting from n equals zero to infinity of a times r to the n. That's one way to write the sum. Another way to write this sum is the sum starting from n equals one to infinity of a times r to the power n minus one you'll see that this gives you the exact same terms. So these are the two different ways you can write or express a geometric series, either starting at zero, then this is your formula, or starting at one, this is your formula. So be very careful how you express your geometric series. So we know that this series will converge to a value if, if your r happens to be in absolute value less than one, it will converge to a over one minus r. But if, if r in absolute value is greater than or equal to one, then this will diverge. So that's one thing we often talk about when it comes to a geometric series. If r is between negative one and one, not including negative one or one, then it converges to this value. If r is in absolute value greater than one or equal to, then it's going to diverge. So let's take a look at some problems and see if we can figure out the convergence or divergence of the geometric series. So here's a geometric series. So I see the series starts at zero and um, our formula is some negative one to the n over four to the n and times by five. So let me rewrite it so that it looks exactly like the form we mentioned earlier. So since it starts at zero, we can just rearrange the terms. This is the sum from zero to infinity of, so I'll pull the five in the front and write negative one over four to the nth power because they both have power n. Now it looks like the form we had from earlier that this is your a value. And this right here, it's going to be our common ratio r. Now it's our r in absolute value is less than one, which means this r has to be greater than negative one and less than one. Since one fourth is within this boundary, it's going to converge. And before I show you the convergence of this series, let me write out some of the terms. So you can explicitly write out some of the terms by choosing values for n starting at zero. When n equals zero, you have five because negative one fourth to the zero power is one. Plus the when n is one, you have five times negative one fourth. Plus when n is two, you have five times negative one fourth to the second power plus so on. So if you recall from above, geometric series is a series of the form, you have a plus a times r plus a times r squared plus o, so on. So here's your a, here's your a times r, Here's your a times r square and so forth. So we can clearly see that the a is five for this problem and r is negative one fourth. Since it is between negative one to one, it's going to converge. But what does it converge to? The series is gonna converge to a over one minus r. So let's substitute a and r. This is five over one minus negative one fourth. And by doing a little bit of Algebraic work, we have five over one plus one fourth, and this would give us five over uh, five fourth, which will simplify to four. So this infinite series will converge to four. So here's another geometric series. Uh, also, it starts at zero and we have to the n power. So this is sort of like your common ratio. So if you want to rewrite this in that form we had, so this is the sum starting from zero to infinity 
of a is one and r is one over square root of two to the n power. So feel free to write out some of the terms if you wanna get comfortable with what is a and what is r. So I see that because the sum starts at zero, this is my a, so a is one, and this is my common ratio r, which is one over square root of two. Now in square root of two, within the boundary of negative one and one, well, it is. So one over square root of two is definitely within that boundary. So it's gonna converge. Now if you're not sure how large square root of two is, you can do the, uh, you can multiply this by its conjugate and you'll figure out that it is the following number. So this is square root of two over square root of two, which is square root of two over two. So it's square root of two, it's well, um, less than one. So it's a very tiny decimal. So this is check. So we know our r is one over square root of two. It's less than one greater than negative one. So it's going to converge. Well, what, it, what will it converge to? It will converge to a over one minus r. So a is one, r is one over square root of two. So it's just one minus um, one over square root of two. And then just clearing this up, we will have one over a square root of two minus one over square root of two, then this would be square root of two over square root of two minus one. So the value converges, this uh, series converges to this value. Here's another uh, geometric series, but we're given uh, sum in the middle of the two formulas. So I'm gonna split it up into two summations. We can do that, that's one of the property of summation. So you split this up into two summations. So you have the sum starting from n equals zero to infinity of one over two to the n plus the sum from n equals zero to infinity of negative one to the n over five to the n. Let's rewrite them. Now, since they both start at zero, this is good. We can uh, assume we can identify our a and r just directly looking at the summation. So this is the sum starting from n equals zero to infinity. I can write one over two to the n as one over two to the n. And the second one, I can also group it together as negative one over five to the n power since they both have n powers. Now for the first one, well, here's your a and r is one half. So for this series, a is one, r is one half. Since r is one half less than one greater than negative one, it's gonna converge. And this one, your a is this number right here. So a is one, r is negative one fifth. Again, r is between negative one and one, so it's gonna converge. So let's find out what they're going to converge to. So for the first sum, it's going to be a, so that's one over one minus r, that's one half. For the second sum, a is also one. This is one over one minus r, that's negative one fifth. Let's add up their values. So this would be uh, one over one minus one half, that's going to be two. And the second one, a little bit of work. So this is one plus one fifth, which will be one over six fifth. So I can write that as five over six. And if you combine these two values, so each of these converges to its individual values. The first one converges to two, the second one converges to five over six. So together they will converge to the following value, 17 over six. So this series is also convergent. So this converges to 17 over six. Now, what about this one? So we have two series, they're both geometric, and we want to know if they converge or diverge. So, um, well, this one right here, this is going to converge because your R is one third. So again, it starts at zero, so that's important. And here is your A. So A is one, but R is one third, and it is between, so one third, is between one and negative one. So check, it's going to converge. Now, what about this one? So again, the sum starts at zero, so that's good. And uh, power is n. Now, if you look at for a, a is this number right here. So a is one, 
Now R is negative three. Okay, now is this within our boundary for convergence? Well, it's not. Negative three is not in this boundary. So we want R to be from negative one to one. Since it's negative three, it's not in there. Therefore, it's going to diverge. So we can say that since R is not within negative one and one, this is going to diverge. This is a divergent geometric series. So now if you look at their sum, one is convergence, one is divergence, of course, they're going to diverge. So this, this entire series diverges. So that's the conclusion we can make for this particular series. Now let's take a look at this problem. So this is also a geometric series, but the series starts at two. So we have to be careful. It's not the form that we wrote down earlier. So we have two different forms and starts from zero to infinity. Then you formalize a times r to the n. Or if you start the sum at one to infinity, then you formalize a times r to the n minus one. So we have to do a little bit of shifting of the indices for this particular series. Let's go ahead and write out some of the terms. So if it starts at two, then we're looking at the sum. When n is two, you have one over four squared. So before that, I, I wanna do one more thing. So I can write the sum in the following way and starting from two to infinity, I'm just gonna write one over four to the n because one to the n power is always one. So you can write it like this. So if you now write out some of the terms, if n equals two, you have one fourth to the second power plus n equals three one fourth to the third power and then the next term one fourth to the fourth power and keep going so now it's it's difficult to see what is your a and what is your r because a will not be the number in front of your expression and so we need to work it out a little bit more so the big question is what is a and what is r so you want to write this sum in this form, you have some a plus a times r plus a times r squared plus so on. So this is the first term. So that's your a, we can see that. All right, so a has to be one over four squared. Then what is r? Well, if you look at the next term that has r in there, but if you rewrite, so one, one fourth to the third power, you can rewrite it as, so one fourth, to the second power and one fourth. So now you can see that here is your a that we claim one fourth to the second power, then this has to be r. And if you wanna do that for the next term, you do the same thing. So one fourth to the fourth power, you can write it in terms of a and r squared. So I can also write this as one fourth squared because that's my a and then one fourth to the second. That's my r squared. So hopefully you get the idea that in this problem, your a is one fourth squared and r is one fourth. And then you figure this out, figure out its convergence because r is between one and negative one. So it's gonna converge to what, a over one minus r. Now, if you don't wanna do it this way and you wanna shift the indices and start the sum at zero or one, this is how you're gonna do it. So here's another way to look at it. So we're looking at the sum from n equals two to infinity of one fourth to the n power. So let's shift. So we're going to shift the indices. So how do we do that? Well, we're gonna introduce a dummy variable. Since this starts at two, I wanna make sure this starts at zero. Let's, let's pick that one. So I want this form right here. You could do the n equals one, but I will do the one starting n equals zero. So I want my series to start at zero. So let's pick K, like K start at zero. I wanna start at zero. So that means my formula right here, this has to be, well, what is then N equals two? Well, if I want K to start at zero, then my formula for K, it has to be N minus two because N starts at two. So if N is two, then K will start at zero. So check this out. This is what it's gonna look like. So our sum is going to be when n equals two, you have k equals zero because n is k minus two. 
and if n is infinity, well, k is still infinity. So I have one fourth, but what is n? So using this substitution, n has to be k plus two. So my formula is going to be one fourth to the power k plus two. So that's how you shift your indices. Now let's write it out so it looks like a geometric series. So this is going to be the sum starting from k equals zero to infinity, one fourth to the k power and one fourth to the second power because by laws of exponents, you can add them up. In other words, I can write this as the sum starting from k equals zero to infinity of one fourth squared times one fourth to the k. And that's exactly what we wanted. We want a to appear right here. And then you have some r to the k power when the k starts at zero. That's your geometric series form. So we know that by looking at this, our a is one fourth squared and r is one fourth. Exactly what we got right here by looking at the expansion. Here it is. So two ways you can do this if the sum doesn't start at zero or one. Now let's find its convergence. So this is gonna converge. The series is gonna converge to a, that's one over four square over one minus r, r is one fourth. So simplify this. So this is one over 16 over uh, four minus one, that's um, three over four. And this will simplify to one over 16 times, so just a little bit of algebra, one over 16 times four over three. So that would be one over 12. So this sum, this geometric series converges to one over 12. All right, so I hope this helps. I'll see you next time.